700 years ago, Marco Polo visited this very city of Hangzhou and he was so captivated by how beautiful it was that he even described it as the most splendid city on earth. These days, Hangzhou is one of the main commercial hubs in China and the quality of life that residents can enjoy here has actually brought people from all around the world. Now, we're going to be doing something a little bit different on Travelog this time. Actually, it's something that we've never done before. I'm going to be following a bunch of foreigners who call Hangzhou their home away from home. And they're going to take me around their city. My name's Dui. Welcome to Hangzhou. This emerald metropolis, with Westlake as its sparkling centerpiece, is the most popular city in Zhejiang province, eastern China. Here, 160 kilometers southwest of its big sister Shanghai, I meet the first hombre on our list. I am Daniel, I am from Mexico. Hello, hola. <laughs> I arrived on the 2014 to Hangzhou. I love this place, I love this city. It's an amazing city. I feel so happy, so safe. Uh, the people help you a lot. Even if you don't know Chinese, if you have any doubts, any problems, if you're lost in the city, they try to help you, they try to do the best. I feel so, so happy, so I love Taking the afternoon off to show me around town on these popular two-wheeled conveyances. We're at one of the city's 2,700 bike share stations, servicing 66,000 bikes. You don't need to be a math genius to figure out why it's the largest public bike share system in the world. And it's pretty affordable. The first hour is free. One yuan for the second hour, two yuan for the third hour, and so on. So if you come here as a tourist, it's so easy to rent a bicycle. You just need to bring your passport, the money, and that's and it. And that's it. That's it. Well, enough cash for a 200 yuan deposit per bike and a 100 yuan prepayment. You should keep your receipt and okay. the card for your refund. OK. Don't okay. lose it. OK, okay we'll okay. try not to. Uh, please remember. Don't switch your bikes because the car uh, it is the car responding your bicycle. Uh, and it's flashing. Yes, I heard it. Perfect. Yank it out. Perfect. Ready. Oh, it was so easy. So easy. Okay. A quick check of the bells and brakes, and we're off. As we pedal around West Lake, I realize just how green downtown Hangzhou is. Despite rapid modernization, it's one of the most environmentally friendly cities in China, having stockpiled its fair share of Green City Awards, including one from the United Nations. If there was one place in the country to have such an extensive bike share network, it'd be Hangzhou. Low carbon travel. And perhaps the next best thing about it? You can ride around all day for free, as long as you check in before the hour is up. Then, when you're done with pedaling, how about another sustainable mode of transport? Legs. Of course, it'll take much longer to do the 15-kilometer perimeter of West Lake, but you get to see roaming rodents and get right up to the ripples of Sihu, its name in Mandarin. I enjoy this city. I can, I can go around the streets in the middle of the night without any problem. Really? Like, yeah. That's feeling awesome. really safe. You see, you can climb those mountains, you can go around the, the West Lake. You can have a, a nice view from the top. You cannot swim, of course. It's <laughs> prohibited, you cannot swim. But it's good to appreciate it. So Daniel here has a little bit of a tip for us first-time visitors like me. Yeah, if you're riding a, a bicycle here in Hangzhou, it's just follow the rules. Every street, they have their own roads. For the bikes, right? For the bikes, so it's so easy to move here. If, of course, in the beginning, you're going to be a little bit scared yeah. because they drive a little bit fast. But if you follow them, you follow the way how they drive, how they ride the bicycle, later it's going to be so easy for you. Yeah. It's a good tip for it's you. It's pretty safe, right? Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty I've safe. I've seen the dividers and... It's pretty yeah, safe. Defenses. And there's a lot of police every, almost in every corner that are checking that you're riding the bicycle in a good way. So. That's awesome. It's really safe. It's Why really don't we safe. go for another another bike ride? Yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Perfect. A quick stroll away from West Lake, or a very quick bike ride for that matter, is an old pedestrian boulevard called Hefang Street. It's 
where I'm supposed to meet number two. But my mental GPS is malfunctioning. I'm so sorry. No, okay. We found him finally. He got lost okay. around this area. Nice to meet you. Yeah, guys. yeah. This is Aslan. He's from Saudi Arabia, right? Yeah. yeah. This is her function. Ah, uh, I see. You're actually a doctor. I'm a doctor. You're a physician. Uh, yeah, physician. Yeah. Yeah, but I changed my career. Herfeng Street is the most famous ancient avenue in Hangzhou, running east to west for about half a kilometre. Aslan somehow fitted me into a schedule to take me here. Previously a physician, he's now a Hangzhou businessman dealing in medical equipment. After all, Hangzhou has been consistently ranked by Forbes as the most favourable business destination in China. It's a city of both tradition and innovation. Getting into industry uh, mm -hmm, life, mm -hmm. and especially into surgical instruments, mm. Hangzhou is very good. As for me, I'm sticking to being a tourist. Knickknacks and neighborhood nibblies, conventional crafts, this is a street full of treats. Oh, <laughs> Nice for kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The kids would like it. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe Hangzhou's economic success has something to do with the "I can do anything" attitude here. What, what's kept you here for 10 years? I mean, surely there's something about the city. I would surely say first thing is that I like the life in Hangzhou because it's more uh, quiet and peace here. It's except not for that, this area. No, except this area, yeah, but eventually if you're living in Hangzhou, it's not like um, no hard feelings to Shanghai, but I have been to yeah, Shanghai yeah, many yeah, times. Yeah. But I see the life in Shanghai is very fast. But in Hangzhou, it's not like that. Even in such a busy area at such a busy time. And one step off the main path, you can practically find yourself in a parallel dimension. This is one of the ancient pharmacies on Hefang Street, still operational today and still selling traditional herbal medicines over the counter. It's similar to a Western clinic. There are practitioners you consult for a prescription, which you hand over to the pharmacists. But instead of pills or creams or whatever, these ladies combine specific organic ingredients on the spot and package them for you. And now that you know Dr. Aslan too, you and I will get the best of both medical worlds here in Hangzhou. Assalamu alaikum, uh, everybody. Uh, I have been living in Hangzhou for uh, almost 10 years now and I would say Hangzhou is a really nice place and it's like a second home to me. I really feel uh, comfortable being in Hangzhou for these 10 years. The best thing I like about Hangzhou is uh, being a foreigner, you don't really feel alone in Hangzhou, you don't really feel like you are left in a city, in a place, uh, you don't feel like being in a in a foreign country because uh, the, the community here is very strong uh, being foreigners and also the Chinese the Hangzhou people they are very uh, helpful and uh, I'm looking forward to be here for next coming years uh, my advice to all of you uh, if you are coming to Hangzhou or visiting Hangzhou is that uh, please do obey the law traffic laws uh, of Hangzhou and uh, make Hangzhou be a more beautiful and peaceful place <laughs> that was really good! <laughs> Coming up next, from sophistication to pandemonium, back to university, get it? And an excursion to the tea fields before some hide and seek at a night market, chock a block with bric a bracs.
Well, it's time to meet the third Hangzhou foreigner on our list, and it looks like I'm going back to school. Konnichiwa. My name is Eri Sasaki, and I'm from Tokyo, Japan. And now I'm studying in Zhejiang University since this February. And I've been enchanted with lovely cities since then. Obviously, Hangzhou is one of the most amazing cities in China that attract lots of people from inside and outside of China, especially fusion of nature, traditional townscape, and modern buildings. It's stunning. Also, I love my environment right now because in the university, there are loads of international students literally gathered from all over the world. So now I'm having a precious time with international students, each of them from different backgrounds. So if I have a friend who is interested in studying in China, I would definitely do recommend Hangzhou as their destination. Eri is as global a citizen as they come. Born in Malaysia, she then spent nine years at a Japanese international school in Tianjin in northeastern China. She attended high school in Singapore, moved to Tokyo, lived in the UK, and her next stop is Australia. Meantime, though, she's steeping herself in everything Hangzhou has to offer. The art of paper cutting and fan painting, Chinese opera, and now, tea. Even at 22, she's got a sizable compendium of past experience to measure up Hangzhou against. And it's looking pretty positive. Mm. Really welcoming, I welcoming. suppose. Yeah, yeah. I, I've heard a lot about um, that. The, all the expats that we've talked to, yeah. they always say, you know, the, the people in Hangzhou are one of the reasons why they're yeah. still here. I mean, yeah. Compared to my life in Tianjin, I feel like more welcome atmosphere mm. in Hangzhou. Mm -hmm. So, have you always been interested in Chinese tea culture? Yes, actually, when I came to China, I thought it would be nice if you have a chance to try mm. making the Chinese tea. Oh. Because this is so different from Japanese green tea. Oh. And what better after tea class activity than an excursion to the tea fields a little further out of town? Hangzhou is renowned for producing quality Longjing tea, also known as Dragon Well tea. This variety of green tea was given imperial status in the Qing dynasty and these days can command extremely high prices. <laughs> She's like a lawnmower. <laughs> Same as other like not tea leaves. I mean it smells like plant, right? <laughs> Eventually, we leave the tea pickers in peace and head down to one of the tea companies who've set up shop at the base of the Verdant Hills. There's an expert tea roaster at work, hand tossing freshly plucked tips over and over and over again. Like most other Chinese green teas, this firing is done to stop the natural oxidation process. And the leaves smell much more appetizing now. I kind of just want to eat it. Hmm? <laughs> Just casually touching yeah. 300 degrees. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then his skin's turned into leather. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm sweating. <sighs> So Eri's got a tip for us visitors to Hangzhou. What do you reckon, Eri? What can you tell us? Hi, um, if you come to Hangzhou in spring and go to all the sightseeing spots in the city centre, like Sifu, <laughs> why don't you come up from the city centre and come to this beautiful tea plantation and mm. enjoy the scenery? Yeah, so venture a little bit further out of the city. That's a good one. Yeah, thank you. Hi, my name is Gemma. I'm from the UK. Uh, I've been in Hangzhou around five years and I love it. I really think that Hangzhou is beautiful, it's energetic, it's everything you want it to be. It's a really great city to be in. Okay, sounds perfect. 
Um, I've just sent you a, a, a selfie, as you've uh, instructed me to do. So uh, <laughs> hopefully that will give you a clue. When I'm feeling a bit crazy, I like to come to Wushan Night Market. It's, it's busy, it's hectic, there's so many people here. Uh, but you can always get a bargain if you can speak Chinese. And if you can't, it's all part of the fun. Bling, bling. Basu. You really have to be patient in here. There's a lot of people. It can get quite crazy, and uh, yeah, it's a bit claustrophobic, but it's all part of the charm. What do you reckon? Let's go find Freya. <laughs> right, we're on the lookout. I just uh, halfway up the first aisle, and I've passed a lot of clothes shops. Can you describe where you are? You are one hard lady to find. Yeah, there's. Uh, I'm, I'm on the. On a curb where they're selling lots of uh, lots of juice. I mean, I could describe myself too. Female, average height, Asian appearance. But Gemma would probably think I'm everywhere. It's all good. After about six dynasties. Oh, hello. Welcome to Hanja. Thank you. But your, your husband's Chinese, right? Gemma's a preschool teacher who met a Chinese husband at a bar in Wenzhou, not too far from here. Although he's from Heilongjiang, way up in the country's northeast. How's he with the um, the heat here? Mm. It gets pretty hot up there as well, though, doesn't it? It gets. It's okay, but it's not as humid. Yeah. Because um, in Hangzhou we're in kind of a dip. Um, he likes it, but he's uh, he's more of a countryside man. I call him a country bumpkin. Oh yeah, but I suppose it's it's better to live here than in Shanghai, for example. Yeah. Know, well, the option and... was Shanghai, Hangzhou, Suzhou, maybe. But we like Kanjo. I was saying earlier, it's like anything you want it to be. So if you want to go out and you want to eat Western, it's there. If you want to go do Tai Chi, you can go and do that. Yeah. I brought, my parents came to visit for the wedding and we were just walking around the Westlake and suddenly this old man came and grabbed my stepmom and was like, come and dance with me. And she's oh, like, that's oh, so my God. cute. That is so cute. Yeah, and then my dad sat on the side going, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not doing that. But I'll take a video while you do it. Aww. So yeah, they're really lovely here. Yeah. Um, I, I really enjoy it. What have you For found? Oh, yes. <laughs> we and squeeze our way through Wushan that. Night Market, losing track of time and space in a microcosm of fluorescence and sweat. For me, more than anything, it's simply pulsating with energy. I love this market. That was awesome. You know, it was like being in a blender and like blend it around and then pfft, spat out the That's very end. Exactly what it is. <laughs> exactly you know what? what I think before we go, Gemma has a little tip for us. What say you, Gemma? You really need to get on a bicycle and just explore the place. Because that's how that's how you found this place, didn't you? Yeah, I was riding along uh, after work one day, and I hadn't ridden a bicycle in so long. Like I crashed into a gate, um, and I found the market. So exactly. you never know what you're going to find. Anyway, avoid taxis. Yes. yes. Take a bike. All right, you know what? Thanks for that. That was awesome. No worries. Guess we'll go our separate ways. Yeah. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Coming up next, the glistening West Lake and its green, green surrounds. Hiking to a Taoist temple tucked away in the hills, and improving my nautical knowledge from zero to next to nothing. But I'm loving it. such a glorious morning, there are tourists everywhere and I'm waiting for a guy from Lithuania who's going to take me on one of the trails around Westlake to go for a bit of a hike. Now this is our starting point, UFA Temple. Hello, it must be you. Yep. Nice That's to me. meet you. Uh, my name is Shredlinas and I'm from Lithuania. As a child I was always fascinated with Asian countries, especially the scenery that involves mountains, lakes, a lot of exotic trees. Especially because as a Lithuanian, in my country we don't really have mountains. So I was always wishing to go somewhere higher. So here I am today in Hangzhou on a mountain trail with you. One of the aspects uh, that I love the most about Hangzhou is its proximity to nature. Like from almost any point in the city, of course if the traffic allows that, you can reach a mountain hiking trail uh, within 30 minutes or so. This is just amazing. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Sharon Us moved to Hangzhou more than two years ago to undertake China studies and hopes to stay for another two, at least. Fascinated by philosophy and religion, he says it's the feeling of reliving history and age-old legends that, for him, makes this city special. Today, Sharonus has picked a moderately comfortable paved walk that begins opposite the banks of West Lake and meanders up and into the tree-throttled sanctuary of Girling Hill. He wants to take me to a Taoist temple he once stumbled across on his lakeside expeditions. So this is it, huh? <laughs> Baopu Temple was founded some 1800 years ago, extended, reconstructed and restored over the centuries, and these days remains an important site of Taoist worship. Taoism is an ancient tradition of philosophy and religious belief that emphasizes living in harmony with nature and in accordance with the interconnected cosmic structure of our universe. Strolling around this haven of tranquility, I can understand why one would choose to build a Taoist temple here. It's like wandering into a real-life parable. In Hangzhou, even walls have stories to tell. So what made you come to Hangzhou in particular? Though? Uh, mostly the philosophical, cultural background, because my first uh, stay in China was in the north okay so i was like okay I, i've tried north i've mm, seen it mm. now i want to do something with the south mm -hmm. uh, then i was uh, because uh, for my thesis papers and research i always did like uh, i did one on uh, mythology oh that would have been interesting yeah, yeah the next one on Taoism, the cult of immortality uh -huh. and all of these motives were focused about the chu guo like the state of Chu, uh -huh. like looked at, at the map where exactly it is and I'm like, okay, it's like Nanjing, Hangzhou, Suzhou, around this location. Yeah. <laughs> Everything <laughs> dull. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then, and then uh, I just checked uh, for my thesis, yeah. I was writing about this philosopher, mm -hmm. uh, Ke Hong, mm -hmm. and I just saw that he was also a uh, local around this area. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's even more the reason to come to Hangzhou. Oh, because wow. before that, one of my friends was staying here and she recommended the city as being amazing. Okay. Yeah, so I had more than enough reasons to just come here. In fact, Baopu Temple is dedicated to Ge Hong. He was a prolific writer and famed alchemist, and legend has it he concocted the immortality somewhere on these slopes. Yeah. Just two minutes ago, we were actually in the middle of the jungle, and now there's a main road and Westlake. Regular Hangzhou. <laughs> oh, just before we head off, uh, Sharon us here has uh, some advice to give us, right? Yeah, if you ever come to Hangzhou, just grab a bike, turn off your phone, and get lost. All right, got that. Well, thank you so much for being a, an you. amazing tour guide. Thanks for the hike. See you next time. Yeah. Bye. And it's back to Sihu. To Sihu? Well, number six on our list, waiting for me at the water's edge. In Hangzhou, it seems almost impossible to escape the scintillating surface of West Lake. Hi, I'm Pat from Australia. I live here in Hangzhou with, uh, with my wife Kathy, my daughter Louise. Hangzhou is a green city, it's clean, it's just such an easy place to live. It has all the modern conveniences and also has a rich history as well. But the thing that really makes Hangzhou is its people. People come from all over China and all over the world to visit the West Lake here. It's a popular tourist destination. And Hangzhou is full of people from just all parts of the world. Students and merchants and, uh, you know, everyone comes here. And so one of the great things to do, one of the things that we enjoy, is just to come down here by the lake, sail and take in the sights. And there are so many people that you can meet. There are so many interesting things that people are doing. There's kite flying, there's calligraphy, there's people doing line dancing. And it just creates this tremendous, festive, fun atmosphere. So we quite often come down and, and just take a walk around the lake, see what's happening, what people are doing, join in the fun, strike up a conversation, 
It's just a great way to spend an afternoon, especially a glorious one like this here in Hangzhou. Pat's a high school English teacher who loves to sail, but his four kids shrank his yacht and gave him a remote control to go with it. And it's great because the lake's beautiful and you, you've got this backdrop either this way with the city or the, the mountains on the other side. Yeah, yeah. Poseidon is small fish in comparison, but when the wind picks up, he's quick. I can't say I'm the swashbuckling, seafaring type, but it's a boat time I try my hand at failing. I mean, sailing. Yay! I can see why you do this, though. Yeah. It's kind of fun. Got him. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, this is when I hand it back to you. What's your favourite bit about um, the West Lake? There's always something happening. There's people to, to see. There's coffee sworn. shops. You can, you can get a takeaway coffee and before you've emptied it, you're at the next Starbucks. <laughs> you know? It definitely isn't often that I get to share a few gags with my fellow countrymen on Travelog, so I'm pretty stoked to be here. And the soft, sweeping Westlake setting tops it all off. Sihu is a freshwater lake the size of Gibraltar. Divided into five sections by three causeways, with ten classic scenes you can get snap happy with. Or, eleven classic scenes, if you include the Edwards family. The West Lake cultural landscape was listed as UNESCO World Heritage in 2011, but it has long been eulogised in poems and immortalised in paintings, and now, panoramaed in mobile phones. After all, yacht or not, Westlake is the shimmering symbol of Hangzhou. So here we have the lovely Edwards family from Australia. Woohoo! I don't know what that accent was. Let's just do that again. <laughs> Australia. <laughs> if you were to give a visitor to Hangzhou a tip, what would it be? I think, because uh, the locals are so friendly, I think you should stop and say ni hao and just uh, see what happens next. I mean, uh, uh, some people, you might be surprised, they can speak English or you might get to practice your Zhongwen <laughs> or uh, you might just end up with some crazy gestures and charades, so, you know, but it's all good fun. Yeah. Kathy? Um, I think good walking shoes. There's so much to see, <laughs> especially around the West Lake that I think uh, if you've got good walking shoes, you're not going to be upset at the end of the day and you're really going to be able to take it all in. You walk a lot, but then you, you know, have time to stop. But yeah. there's just so much beauty around the place and uh, good walking shoes gets you through. You're like, that's such a mum thing to say, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Lou? Yeah. Um, well, there's a lot to see in Hangzhou, obviously. It's a really beautiful city. Um, but I think, by all means, see it all. Go and explore everything, but take time to stop and really take it in. And yeah, just look around you and have some quiet time to just really experience everything to the fullest. That's perfect. This is why you guys have chosen to live here in Hangzhou, right? Ah, it's a great it's place beautiful. to live. <laughs> yeah, really beautiful. Yeah. And peaceful. Yeah. yeah. And safe. And safe. Yeah. 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 As night falls over Westlake, I pause, like what Lou suggested, and have some quiet time to myself. So far, I've only met six out of the 19 resident foreigners on our list. Six with unique takes on the city, but share a real love for it. If only Marco Polo could see Hangzhou now. Join us next time for part two of our Hangzhou special. <laughs>